Hi students, welcome to the part B of downsampling of display time signals. Um, uh, in the previous uh, part of the same lecture, we have had a look at uh, how like these relationships we have already worked out uh, that uh, how uh, suppose if I am downsampling and given x of n by a factor d, how it's uh, how it's x of e power j omega is related to the dtft of the downsample signal right that's what i had a we had a look at say for example uh, this is your uh, this is your x of e power j omega this is your x of e power j omega so suppose in the example we worked out we are downsampling it by a factor 2 then we had seen that its amplitude gets uh, factored by a value 2 and there is a scaling happening across omega so whichever by a factor 2 again so whichever is there at pi by 2 now would go to pi and so on in addition to that if i am downsampling it by a factor of 2 one more copy in addition to this would be placed okay uh, suppose if i am downsampling it by 4 in addition to this three more copies would be placed right and then uh, from graphically we had worked out this same expression as well right and then we discussed that when could there be an aliasing problem. Uh, for that to answer, uh, you are downsampling by a factor m, the new value uh, cutoff frequency, highest frequency would be omega n times m is what you would be getting. So that essentially when you see it in terms of omega, it has to be less than or equal to pi. In other words, omega n is less than or equal to pi by n. Suppose you are given a discrete time signal, you want to downsample by a factor m. So if it is not what you want to decide is not, you are okay with getting rid of some frequencies, but what you are more keen is to get the desired m value with which you want to downsample it. So what can you do in that case? Simply do a low pass filtering there with a cutoff frequency of pi by m that ensures there is no frequency in your discrete time Fourier transform higher than pi by m so that you would avoid the um, aliasing effect okay so this is then i gave you an exercise here i'm going to give you please work it out it's the same problem as the earlier one which i worked out but all that is varying now is instead of m equal to 2 the way i did it here as m equal to 2 i'm going to do this with m equal to 3 that's one thing and obviously that would result in aliasing so i want you to use a low pass filter as well so this is the example i want you to work out x of e power j omega same as the one we worked out in the earlier example so i i write the same thing here so wherever i ask you to plot that's where you need to draw things so now you use m equal to 3 instead of m equal to 2 and that downsampled one you draw but if you do die right away the downsampling what is it that you would be getting please write it here and the next plot is what should be the low pass filter values you consider with gain one and what should be the cutoff frequencies you try it here and now the second one is to elevate or to get rid of this uh, aliasing effect the original x of e power j omega will be multiplied with this low pass filter let that resulting frequency spectrum would be x tilde of e power j omega would, uh, would uh, represent the resulting frequency spectrum so you plot that out and then instead of downsampling like earlier x of e power j omega by factor 3 now you downsample this x tilde of e power j omega by factor 3 and plot this out okay this is the homework for you please work it out um, and uh, by the way this is a worked out example from the open ham and shepherd textbook so once you put your all your efforts here then cross check your answers with the answers available in Oppenheim and Shepard. Right, so far we had a look at all these uh, 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 relationships between the downsample signal DTFT and the DTFT of the original discrete time signal in uh, intuitively to an extent, then graphically with those plots we have seen, but this is where we would be now deriving it, the same thing. Okay, so x of n equal to xc of nt, this is something uh, this is obtained assume that by sampling it with a periodicity of t. That's how you got x of n Okay, we worked out already what is x of e power j omega in the first uh, In the second sampling class, right gets multiplied by 1 by t then 
this omega scale by omega by t scaling then you keep uh, you will be keeping infinite number of copies each copy shifted by an integer multiple of 2 pi by t that's your x of e power j omega now assume instead of using time period of t you are using a time period of mt that's how you get a down sampling this x of n by a factor m is equivalent to in fact taking samples of the continuous time signal with a periodicity of mt m times t right so that the similar expression i am writing but now for a periodicity of t prime equal to mt so 1 by mt x e of in place of t i get 1 by mt right 2 pi by again your t here is mt times a purposefully i changed from uh, k here variable to r so this should be r so it should be clear now uh, shortly why i changed this r variable before that take a look at the expressions of x of e power j omega and x d of e power j omega and look at the summations and how they are different well uh, you, you could see here for m copies here that you have that you are keeping in x d of e power j omega you will be in fact keeping only one copy there see in the denominator where you are keeping copy 2 pi by every mt so whenever this k is equal to m plus 1 time t before that you will be getting m copies here right that's why we have seen graphically also in order to deal with that and expressing this summation in terms of the summation of x of e power j omega simple change of variables is done your r being i plus km this k varying from minus infinity to plus infinity of course the same variable k here okay this i uh, so you could see when you are down sampling by a factor of m now you have m samples so if you have compared to relative to x of e power j omega additionally you have m minus 1 samples so far to deal with that you are varying i from 0 to m minus 1 okay k way of course minus infinity to plus infinity you do this change of variable for r okay uh, now r equal to i plus k m uh, then i am further uh, using separating the summations for i and k and whatever is there inside uh, with k is something i could readily use that to compare with x of e bar j omega and replace that okay so let me go a bit more detail let me write it as 1 by m out i varying from 0 to m minus 1 okay um, i plus km this k varies from minus infinity to plus infinity let me take 1 by t inside and then in place of r let me keep i plus km okay minus so that if i separate it uh, i will give me 2 pi by mt into i here for k times m i would of course that would uh, cancel out this m and i would get 2 pi by t into k hope you could see here 2 pi by t into k in x of e power j omega similar expression i am getting it here right then you could see with some effort uh, putting some effort that x d of e power j omega is nothing but 1 by m scaling i varying from 0 to m minus 1 whatever is there inside this is nothing but when you compare with x of e power j omega okay if you substitute omi in place of omega omega by m you get here omega by mt that's what you are getting here right and in addition there is a variable of 2 pi by mt into k that would come here and anyway this expression of minus 2 pi by t into k is anyway here so that's how you are able to express x d of a power j omega in terms of x of e power j omega to repeat and summarize um, you are down sampling it by a factor of m you are down sampling x of m by a factor of m so amplitude wise there is 1 by m here your omega scaling will be changed by omega by omega m so i is varying from 0 to m minus 1 0 in fact corresponds to just the scaled version of this but the moment you are changing it there are m minus 1 more copies placed but now each one shifted by a factor of 2 pi by m integer multiples of 2 pi by m till m minus 1 so that's all uh, as far as the uh, yeah th that's we are done with the down sampling part okay uh, so given in uh, a continuous time signal what was happening the moment you are down sampling uh, there is a change in the amplitude by a value of 1 by m okay 
Then there is a scaling in the omega axis by, by a factor omega. M minus one additional copies are placed, okay? And you have seen what's where they are exactly placed. This could result uh, in aliasing effect, okay? And to avoid that, you do a low pass filter, okay? I'll stop here. And in the next video, we'll see upsampling of discrete time signals. If you have any questions, as usual, you could post them in the comment section, okay? And of course, you could get them clarified in the upcoming uh, Zoom conference session as well, okay? Conference call. Hmm? Yeah, see you in the next uh, lecture. Okay, thanks. Thanks for watching. Bye.